It is estimated that in the U.S. alone, some 20 million animals are used every year to test drugs. This includes vaccines, cosmetics, household products, and chemicals used in industry and agriculture, such as pesticides. Yet poisoning these animals does not make our drugs safe. Their bodies respond differently, and severe and fatal side effects may never be detected. Despite animal testing, human trials are still necessary. Those who say we test on animals to avoid testing on people are wrong. While around 12,000 U.S. children will reportedly receive untested shots of swine flu vaccine, critics say the vaccination trial means the children will effectively be turned into guinea pigs. There's a bit of a rush to test a new flu vaccine. Now, like you said, about 12,000 children in Oklahoma are going to be tested with this vaccine to see what the side effects are going to be. And like you said, here in the United States, we call that being a guinea pig. Well, I think the concern is that the test community uh, are children who really don't have a whole lot uh, to say about what happens uh, uh, with themselves. Um, uh, we know that in the past, uh, vaccines have been administered to children. There's a feeling that because of the vaccines were not well tested, uh, that uh, some of that vaccination, some of those vaccinations may have led to autism. And there's been several class action suits uh, in that area. So uh, with a new vaccine, it's untested. Uh, a lot of people are saying, why are you using children uh, as young as uh, three years old uh, for this uh, type of testing? They certainly don't know what the situation is, and it's uh, uh, probably not the best uh, uh, test community to use. If we really want to get into this issue of IPS research here in Oklahoma City is going to be spearheading they're going to have the honor of injecting swine flu vaccination into 1,200 Oklahoman kids. We are the first in the nation to test this new vaccine on children. They said that uh, they anticipate uh, that they'll have uh, uh, 200 children. The first group will be 200 children ages 3 to 8. Uh, and then nationwide, we're going to have 12,000 altogether. Aside from the dangerous ingredients many people already know about, like squalene or thimerosal, one of the key ingredients used in swine flu vaccines is the diseased flesh of African green monkeys. This is revealed in U.S. Patent Number 5911998, method of producing a virus vaccine from an African green monkey kidney cell line. As this patent explains, ingredients used in the vaccine are derived from the kidneys of African green monkeys who are first infected with the virus, then allowed to fester the disease, and then are killed so that their diseased organs can be used to make vaccine ingredients. This is done in a cruel, inhumane flesh factory environment where the monkeys are subjected to a process that includes incubating said inoculated cell line to permit proliferation of said virus then preparing a vaccine from the harvested virus. The patent for this process is held not just by the National Institutes of Health, but by another private corporation known as Dine Corporation. The fraud of animal research can be easily demonstrated with two clear facts. Number one, the research animals are not human beings. And number two, the animals are always healthy before the experiments. Since animals are not human beings, their problems are obviously different from ours. Their bodies are different, they suffer from different diseases, and their reactions to drugs are also different. Besides, the fact that the animal is healthy before the experiment means that disease and or trauma has to be given by violent and artificial means, which can never be the same as the disease which develops spontaneously in a human being. Clearly, the results obtained from artificially diseased animals can never be extrapolated to human beings. Therefore, it is not a question of whether or to what degree animal research works. The point is that animal research cannot work simply because the premise on which it is based is false. Today we're talking about biopharma firm Novavax. The company has just developed a vaccine that successfully fights swine flu in animals and could pave the way for a vaccine for people. So uh, for those of you who don't know about our technology, we, we use virus-like particles. It's a recombinant technology that takes just some genetic materials of the virus and recreates a virus shell and the outside proteins of the virus. 
which acts as the vaccine. And this particle is what we've used uh, in animals recently, particularly in ferrets, which is the right animal model for flu. And we've shown that uh, within four weeks of the discovery of H1N1, uh, the vaccine that we produced and administered in these ferrets, that these ferrets were actually protected from a live uh, challenge or exposure of, of the H1N1 virus. Like we've seen in past pandemics, that sometimes it's the vaccine that does more harm than the pandemic itself. How are those two issues something that you guys are focusing a lot on? I think partly it will be addressed through human testing. It, it cannot be completely uh, eliminated through those tests, but at least it will give some idea. So I think every manufacturer that is creating a vaccine for H1N1 has to go through some sort of a clinical test. Um, and that's, those tests are ongoing for some of them, and some of them will start now. Uh, we will also be putting our vaccine through human clinical testing before uh, they can, it can be used for any mass vaccination. Ushering drugs to market through animal testing is dangerous. Legal drugs kill more people per year than illegal drugs combined. So many medicines. Over 100 million Americans take prescription medicines every day. So much to learn when it comes to drug safety. Problems with uh, drug safety uh, are the uh, fifth most common cause of uh, morbidity and mortality in the United States. I'm a very angry woman that this medicine has destroyed my health. Each year, toxic side effects from prescription medicines injure tens of thousands of Americans. Tonight, one of the most popular drugs taken for allergies is being pulled off the shelves in the U.S. Since 1997, over a dozen drugs had to be taken off the market because of severe side effects. Off the market. Pulled from the market. FDA administrators say these problems could not have been prevented. At the time a drug is approved, we don't have all the information uh, that we would like to have. Off the market. Off the market. When a drug goes on the market, only about 3,000 patients have ever been given that drug. We will never know all the toxicity that can occur. The cholesterol-lowering drug Baycol is being pulled off the market. It's been linked to 31 deaths in the U.S. from muscle destruction. I felt it was an open-shut case. This was a dangerous group of drugs with very little, if any, benefit, and that they should be immediately removed from the market, removed from use, discontinued, disappear. Well, that didn't happen, I became disturbed. I became concerned about the system. I became concerned about the drug company's role in this. And I was particularly concerned with the potential effect on the thousands or millions of people who would be using the drug. She was a perfectly healthy child. Um, it was presented to me by the um, physician's assistant that um, I get my daughter the vaccine which I had seen on the media, I had seen on the commercials that it prevents cervical cancer. And I, of course, was concerned and asked about the side effects. And she had told me that it's the typical uh, redness at the site, some um, mild symptoms of fever and any other type of uh, flu-like symptoms. So um, at that point, I figured it was the best thing I could do for my daughter to prevent cervical cancer. And um, I consented to the vaccine only to find out about three to four weeks later she developed um, vasculitis, which is a small blood vessel disease, and she has huge purple lesions that are blistery um, that are covering her lower extremities, and it also in, it has affected her intestines where she's had a little bit of rectal bleeding, mm. and I'm concerned about her future in terms of kidney disease because I understand it can go into your kidneys, and um, knowing what I know now, after the fact, I would have never had her vaccinated. The main point is that we must attack vivisection on medical grounds and forget the ethical grounds. Why? You know that the ethical considerations, like when you say, when you, you speak of the sanctity of life, or of animals have rights, this is perfectly right. Slogans will always be outshouted by the sleazy slogans of our adversaries who say babies or dogs. Babies or dogs. And this slogan has finally conditioned the medical thinking of our whole nations, of yours and mine.